Number 19. Suppose a diving board with no one on it bounces up and down in simple harmonic motion with a frequency of 4 hertz. The board has an effective mass of 10 kilograms. What is the frequency of the simple harmonic motion of a point of 75 kilogram diver on the board? All right, so sometimes on a problem like this, a, a, another technique that we can use is kind of instead of like substituting formulas in for everything, and another way to do it would be to take it one piece at a time. Meaning, we identify what we're given. It says that the, uh, the board's doing simple harmonic motion, all right, and it tells us the frequency, and it tells us the mass of the board, right? So they tell us the frequency, it's going to be 4 hertz, and they tell us the mass of the board. The mass of the board is going to be about 10 kilograms. So the question is, well, what can I do with these pieces? Well, the first thing I can do is, if I know the frequency, what can I find automatically? Right, the period. Why? Because the frequency is basically just the inverse of the period. So F is equal to 1 over T. So I can already, I just solve for it, all right? Just, so let's plug in 4 for frequency, so 1 over T. So basically solving for T, T would be 0.25. So this is the period. 0.25 seconds, okay? Now, remember hertz is just basically seconds minus one or per second, all right? So now, I know the period. Well, okay, I know the period and I know the mass now. What can I do with that information knowing that this is simple harmonic motion? Well, if I know the period and the mass, I'll highlight the T and the M. Well, I can use the formula over here, right? t is equal to 2 pi times the square root of m over k. So I can, I realize that if I know t and if I know m, I can solve for k. And even if you're not sure if that's going to help you, just do it. Most likely it'll help you. All right. And it's something else, another piece of information you can uncover. So let's do that. I'm going to write out the formula. The period of some simple harmonic motion, which is basically write the time per wavelength or the time per cycle or the time per oscillation, whatever you want to call it, is equal to 2 pi multiplied by the square root of the mass that is oscillating divided by the spring constant of that spring, or right, the force constant, whatever the whatever thing is oscillating. All right, so basically now let's just plug in what we know, right? The period is going to be 0.25. That's equal to 2 pi times the square root of then the mass, which was 10 divided by k. So you have an equation with only one unknown, and that's beautiful because we can solve this. So why don't we do, like we've done in the other problems, divide out the 2 pi from both sides, right? So it's going to be now 0.25, that's the period, divided by parenthesis 2 pi, and we'll get a value of about 0.0398-ish. And that's going to be equal to the square root of 10 over k. Now we got to solve for k, so we got to get rid of that square root, right? So that means we have to square both sides. So square it. I'm going to leave it just a square. I'll plug it in later. So 0 0.0398 squared is going to be equal to 10 over k. And now all we have to simply do is just manipulate this, right? Cross multiply. Bring the k out of the denominator on the right up to the numerator on the left. Bring what's ever in the numerator on the left down into the denominator on the right. And look, voila, he's just solved. There you go. Plug it in. So the spring constant now is going to be equal to 10, 10 divided by that answer squared. One second, I hit the wrong button. And this is second answer, and then that whole thing will be squared. And this is approximately now six, uh, yeah, 6,000, or 6.3, we'll say 6.32 times 10 to the uh, third. All right, I don't really know why I write that out when you would think scientific notation here would shorten it up, but it, it makes it a lot longer. Uh, so this is in uh, newtons per meter, okay? So that is now the answer uh, for the spring constant. Now, is that even what we needed at all? Well, no. Okay, no big deal. But now what can we do? Well, now we know the spring constant of the board, and that's going to be constant no matter what, okay? So now what we realize is that we have to find the frequency, all right. So basically, if you notice what we did, we took the frequency, we found the period, right? We took then the period, and we were able to solve for the force constant. Now they want us. Now they're asking us for the frequency. So more than likely, we're going to kind of be going more or less backwards if you think about it that way. Okay. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to well, first move this out of the way. All right. Hope you guys are having a good day today. All right. It's always a good day when you're doing physics. Would you, wouldn't you agree? All right. Sure. So what is the frequency? Um, so now, again, let's write down the formula one more time, that the period of oscillation will be equal to 2 pi uh, multiplied by the square root of the mass that's oscillating divided now by uh, the spring constant k. So notice, I know what k is now, right? k is going to be this value right here. So in terms of my formula, I know what k is. What about the mass now? Well, we have a 75 kilogram diver, but is, is that the mass we're going to plug in here for M? Well, not exactly, right? Why? Because what's oscillating? What's moving? The diver and the board. Right? The diver and the board are moving. They're both oscillating. If the problem never said told me anything about the board, and there was no way I could figure it out, like they just totally didn't tell me this at all. All right. I mean, the problem would have had to have changed a little bit anyway, um, because I couldn't find the, the force constant. But if they didn't mention anything about it, then I'd have to assume it's negligible. But since they did tell me something about it, I cannot assume it's negligible. So therefore, when you're thinking about this, that's why I always keep trying to, when I state the formulas, right? when I state this formula out, I say the period of oscillation is equal to 2 pi multiplied by the square root of the mass that's oscillating. That hopefully... That key, if you keep saying the formulas over and over to yourself that way, when you think about it, then you ask yourself, well, what's the mass that's oscillating? And you got to think that it's a diver on the board. So there's two things that are oscillating. And the board's mass is not negligible. So that's why you have to add them. So now, basically, I can solve for period, that means, right? Because I know the mass that's oscillating. The mass that's os oscillating is the 75 kilogram diver plus then the 10 kilogram board all divided now by the spring constant we just found of 6.32 times 10 to the third. So let's calculate it. So the period here now of oscillation is going to be 2 pi times n the square root of 85 essentially divided by then our answer we found before, right? the, uh, the spring constant. So here the period is now going to be 0 0.729 seconds. So now that's the time for a single um, oscillation, all right? And the time got longer, right? Here was the time before for just the board. And now once you add mass, the period goes up. I mean, that's what the formula tells us, right? When mass goes up, the period goes up. So this all should be making sense, hopefully mathematically speaking. And now that I know the period, can I connect it back to the frequency? Well, sure, right? We know that frequency is equal to 1 over the period, so basically just plug in 1 over 0 0.729, and now, lo and behold, we're going to find the frequency. So this is going to be just the inverse of the period, so it works out to be 1.37. 1 1.37, and this is now going to be, you can write it as this, second minus 1, that's fine. You can also write it in terms of hertz, that's basically the unit, okay? Um, and that's the frequency. Remember, the frequency tells us the number of cycles or oscillations or waves, whatever you want to call it, per second. So if one wave, right, if, if, if one wave takes or one cycle takes a, you know, about three quarters of a second, that means in a full second, we should have a little more than a full oscillation, right? I mean, we should have about 1.3-ish, all right? So that should hopefully make sense. Guys, I appreciate it very much. That concludes this video. Thank you for tuning in. We appreciate it very much. I might have said that already, and if I didn't, let me say it one more time. We appreciate it very much. Help us out. Subscribe. All right, tell your friends, hit the like button. We, uh, did I say appreciate it very much? Yes, I think I did. All right, thank you guys. Take care.